Well, hello again. Dave Hill coming at you. I hope you've been enjoying our lessons so far. I've been having a great time doing them, and I really want to thank you for uh, checking in every day and practicing hard for us. So we're, I think we're doing some good work together here, and I hope you've been studying and reviewing each of the lessons that you've already watched up till now. Uh, so let's talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to do, um, we're going to do a little bit of warm up at first. I've got a new warm up exercise for you, and I've also got a, a new scale that we're going to talk about. It's kind of a variation of a scale that we've already learned, and we've got a new progression for you. So we've got some some good stuff to uh, to check out today. So let's do our warm up as I've talked about before. Warm up, warming up is very important for your hands, and it kind of gets you uh, into the mode of playing your guitar. So let's do. Uh, our first warm-up that we've learned from our previous lessons, just a little bit of that, and uh, we'll also introduce a new one. So the first warm-up that we did was a hand-stretching one, you remember, it was like this. All right, so let's do that now. Here we go. Three, four. up now. Okay, so when you hold that chord, in fact, you can actually feel your tendons and your hands stretching a little bit. So that might even be a good way to do it too. You could kind of hold it as long. stretching, right? That's good. You might feel a little bit of pain. It's not bad. You're just stretching. for a second and feel your hands and your tendons in your hands stretching. If it ever feels like it's too much, just relax for a minute and shake your hand. That usually helps. Okay? So that's a good exercise and we want to do that a little bit every day, not too long. We don't want to do that for a half an hour or anything, just a few minutes to stretch your tendons. Okay? You can also just do some simple things like this that will help. You can stretch your hand back, right, and relax your hand and your, get your blood flowing into your hand a little bit. That's good. Even both hands are good. Okay? So try that. Okay, we're going to do um, a chromatic exercise, which is basically the variation of what we did already, which is this. But I want to do a full chromatic scale, so we're just going to add a position shift as we walk up the neck. And we go all the way up to the a. So when I say chromatic, I mean we're playing literally every note, right, up the neck. Right, if we did it on one string, you'd just li literally see it do like this. Right, but it makes more sense to do this. So let's see what tempo we're at here. Do, 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 do. Let me slow it down just a little bit. We're warm enough here. So how about a little bit more? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Back down. Again. Make 
make sure it's alternate picking. That means down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Fingers close to the fretboard. No wasted energy. Only play this as fast as you can. Play it clean. Okay, so I don't want you to play it faster than you can play it clean. That might have very well been too fast for you, and that's okay. Uh, if that's the case, when you, uh, you know, when I stop the exercise, just find the tempo that you can do it at home with your metronome and just do that. It might be right here. As long as you're playing with good alternate picking and clean left hand technique, that's okay. Eventually you'll bring up the tempo and that's fine. It's better to start slow and make it clean than practice fast and, and practice sloppy. That's no good. Okay, so let's do a, a new exercise today and I'm going to show you it's on the board behind me here. Hope you can see this. I wrote it in tab today, okay? Um, and it's really kind of a pseudo pattern from a major scale, which we're going to talk about eventually. But that's okay. You don't have to know exactly what a major scale is now. Maybe you do already, but I, I just wrote it out in tab so you can see it. And what this is, is just a combination of, of a, fi a, a wider spread than we've been encompassing and also um, string string ascending up up the neck okay so basically all I did is I took a one three or one four two combination and I tried to make that go up the neck in a major scale more or less so it's gonna sound like this okay so it's basically kind of an A major sound exactly right up the scale, uh, but it, it is all diatonic to A. So I just think that's, that feels good because it's a nice stretch with your left hand, and uh, it just, it sounds, it sounds melodic because it's all in one key. So, so if I were to play it along with my metronome, maybe a little slower again, since we're just learning it, maybe like this. Or maybe slower yet. Maybe like this. One, two, three, four. Now, you could say, well, what do I do after I come to the top? Well, I would just turn around and come back. And then start it over. So basically, you go all the way to the end, and you just turn around and come back the other way. Okay, so it's, now it's going to sound like this. Two. Three, four. simple but it, it, it kind of gets your fingers moving in less of a pattern than, than a non diatonic exercise would okay so now interestingly enough this is also something you can play around with a different rhythm okay I'm doing I'm doing basically feeling four beats or two beats per, two notes per beat eighth notes in other words but if you wanted to make it interesting you could play it and feel three per beat so you could go like this okay now what th what does that make it feel like well we're going to talk about other rhythm subdivisions and other lessons but basically that's going to be called an eighth note triplet okay there's three per beat so that's one two three one two three one two three one two three one two Okay, so we're speeding it up essentially by adding one more 
note per beat. So if I use the same rhythm, it would seem to be a little faster, even though the quarter note's the same, because I'm playing three of them per beat, right? So it's going to sound like this. slow it down just to help you out a little bit so you can play three per beat and let's make it yeah I think that's better for us here we go one two three two two three three two three four two three exercise we can apply those kind of things to a lot of <coughs> other scale patterns and um, scales that we're going to use but I just wanted to show you a new one today so add that to your arsenal of, of uh, scale warm-up and practice with your with your left and right hand okay so now let's talk about something new we're gonna we're gonna introduce today and it's gonna say, seem uh, familiar which is good because as I've told talked to you about in previous lessons it's always good to build uh, from previous information when you're learning new information. You try to uh, learn something new by attaching it to something you've already learned and seeing how it relates to that information. So on one of our other lessons we talked about the idea of pentatonic scales. You remember we had in our other lesson we had a major pentatonic scale, okay? And we learned uh, that a major pentatonic is basically the term pentatonic means five tones pentatonic, five tones, okay? So a pentatonic scale is nothing more than five tones taken from a major scale. So if we had a major scale, the major scale would sound like this. Okay, nothing wrong with that. It's a great scale. We use it all the time. Okay, but a pentatonic scale simply just takes out two notes. It takes out the fourth degree of the scale and the seventh degree of the scale, and it's a simpler, more direct sounding scale, and it sounds like this. Okay, so that's the, that's the pentatonic scale I showed you last lesson. Okay, we learned two patterns. We learned this one right here. That's two octaves of the scale. Okay, and we also learned another pattern that would be, if you wanted to look at my board over here, you could see I learned this one. We showed this one as well. And remember, the reason I'm talking about patterns is because all of these scales relate to chord forms that define where the patterns are. So if you recall, this major pentatonic scale pattern fits really nicely over the top of a pattern three major chord that we've talked about in previous lessons. So it's a beautiful way to see the whole chord and neck right there. And then this other pattern here, pattern one, you can see fits in perfectly over a, a pattern one major chord that we uh, learned originally from an open string chord, the C shape that becomes a movable shape when we uh, apply the bar right here. So this is all coming together and hopefully you're starting to see the connection to chords and patterns. Okay, but now we're not going to talk about major pentatonic today. We're going to talk about a variation of major pentatonic or a pentatonic scale that's within a major pentatonic scale. Okay, and I want you to see something. Okay.